Target acquired. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Overkill Gaming, your home for handheld gaming, whether it's the Steam Deck, the Aya Neo, or the soon to be released ROG Ally, we've got you covered. Today, we're going to be revising one of our most popular tutorials here on the channel, that being our internal SSD dual boot guide. And this video will incorporate everything that we have learned since that last video. We'll be showing how to set up a dual boot with Windows and SteamOS, complete with an easy to set up dual boot menu so that you can easily select your operating system at startup. No more having to hold down volume and power to switch between your operating systems. We'll also go over some performance tweaks for Windows to help you get the highest FPS possible. We'll also go over the latest version of Handheld Companion, which is what we use for controller support as well as power management within Windows. We'll also show how you can use your own custom FPS counter, which is something that a lot of you have been asking me about. All right, so before we dive in, if you guys enjoy this video or find it helpful, please be sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing as well. We cover tips, tricks, and gameplay performance for the Steam Deck and other handhelds, which will also include the ROG Ally once it is officially released. You definitely do not want to miss out on any of it. All right, so diving right on in, let's first go over what we're gonna need to get started. Starting on the hardware side, obviously you're gonna need a Steam Deck, one that is at least 256 gigabytes or higher. For those looking to dual boot on a 64 gigabyte Steam Deck, this is not gonna be possible, unfortunately, due to space limitations. For that, I will refer you to our video on how to dual boot with an SD card or our video on how to replace the internal SSD and then come back to this video. We also used a separate PC to create our images, so we recommend having access to a separate PC. You will also need a USB thumb drive or SD card large enough to hold Windows. We were able to complete this entire process with a 64 gigabyte SanDisk thumb drive. And lastly, you will also need a USB hub and a mouse and keyboard. Now let's go over all of the software you will need to complete this process, all of which will be included in the description. So first you're going to need an app called Rufus, which is what we use to create the Windows 11 image. Next, you're going to need the Windows 11 ISO, which can be downloaded for free from Microsoft. You're also going to need the SteamOS recovery software, along with the Windows Steam Deck drivers, all of which are provided by Valve. Also, you're going to need an app called Bloaty Nosy, which is what we are going to use to de-bloat Windows for better performance. And for our performance overlays, you will need to download MSI Afterburner, which comes bundled with RTSS along with HW info. And what I like to do once I have everything downloaded is put everything into a folder so that I can easily have access to them, but this is optional. Now that we have everything in place, we are free to begin. So the first thing we're gonna do is create the SteamOS recovery drive. With our thumb drive or SD card inserted into our PC, we will launch Rufus and select the SteamOS recovery software. You can leave the rest of the settings here as they are, and we will tell it to begin. This process can take as long as 10 minutes or so, once finished, we will eject our thumb drive or SD card and head on over to the Steam Deck. Now for this next step, you're gonna wanna make sure that the Steam Deck is powered off completely. Once powered off, we're going to hold down the volume minus and the power button until we hear the chime and then release. This will take us into the boot menu. As you can see here, there are several drives being detected. The one that we want to select is the one storing our SteamOS recovery image, which is the SanDisk USB device. We will now boot into the SteamOS recovery software. Now, unfortunately, I am having to re-record this part because I didn't realize that my screen wasn't being captured the first time around. So what I am going to do now is show you how to partition using an SD drive that I am not currently using. To do this, we need to click on our start menu, go to system and select KDE partition manager. When it launches, it will scan all of the drives currently being detected on our system. Here you can see we have our SSD where we currently have SteamOS and Windows installed. It is a one terabyte SSD and we have partitioned 64 gigabytes for Windows and we'll be storing games on a separate SD card. The drive listed below it is our thumb drive where we have our SteamOS recovery image stored. The drive listed above our SSD is the 256 gigabyte SD card that we will use for our demonstration. So try and imagine that this is a Steam Deck with a 256 gigabyte SSD. 
And what we want to do is partition 64 gigabytes to hold the Windows OS because we're planning to install all of our games to an SD card. To do this, all we need to do is right click on the main partition and then select Resize Move. This will bring up a dialog box. In this box, we will type our desired partition size. You can set this size to whatever you choose as long as you have enough free space available. For our example, we will set this to 64 gigabytes or 64,000 megabytes. Then we click OK and it will partition the drive. Here it shows 62.50 gigabytes unallocated. This is where we will install Windows. From here, we click Apply to finalize our changes. The amount of time this will take will vary based on the size of the drive and how many apps or games you currently have installed. Once everything is complete, we can click OK and we'll just double check everything once more to make sure everything is correct before powering down the Steam Deck. All right, so here we are back at our Windows PC and what we're going to do now is reopen Rufus to create our Windows 11 installation image. We're going to follow the exact same process as before with the SteamOS recovery software, except this time we're going to select the Windows 11 ISO. Once this is complete, we are going to drag and drop all of the drivers and apps that we downloaded onto the USB drive. This is going to save us a ton of time later on. Once all of our files have been transferred to our thumb drive, we'll head back over to our Steam Deck. So here we are back at our Steam Deck with it powered completely off. Once again, we're going to hold down the volume minus plus power until we hear the chime to get back into the boot menu. Once in the boot menu, we'll select our Windows installation drive. Once the installation software is launched, we will click on install and when asked for a product key, we will select I don't have a product key. From here, you'll be able to choose which version of Windows 11 you want to install. We will be choosing Windows 11 Pro. Next, we will accept the license agreement and at the next prompt, we will choose to do a custom install. This is to ensure that Windows is installed on the specific partition that we created instead of overriding SteamOS. From here, we will select the partition that we created and then click next. Windows will then begin the installation process, which can take some time. At this point, I'll grab my Aya Neo and enjoy a couple of matches of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Once Windows is done installing, the system will need to reboot. Now that we are finally in Windows, the first thing we will do is install the Steam Deck drivers. We have dragged and dropped all of the files that we plan to install onto the desktop for easy access. The first driver that we will install is the AMD graphics driver. If your screen is incorrectly oriented, do not worry, we will fix this in a moment. During the graphics driver installation, you may notice some flickering and your screen may flip to portrait mode. We will fix this after we have completed the installation. To fix the orientation, all we have to do is click on start, then settings, then display settings, scroll down to where it says orientation and then choose landscape. Next, we'll install the drivers for our micro SD card slot. And when prompted to restart the device, we will choose no. We will restart the device after all the drivers have been installed. And next we'll install both of our audio drivers. Both drivers require us to right click on a setup information file and then choose the install option. And next up we'll install our Bluetooth driver. And last but not least, we will install our Wi-Fi drivers. And with all of our drivers officially installed, we can now restart the device. All right, so here we are back in Windows 11 on the Steam Deck after a restart. We've also gone ahead and installed a couple of launchers as well. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do when setting up a dual boot on the Steam Deck is correcting the date and time. As you can see down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, it is now showing the time at 744 p.m. This is not the correct time. The time is actually 1244 p.m. This is caused by the fact that Windows and SteamOS use two different date and time formats. Windows uses local time while SteamOS uses universal time. This time difference is going to cause Windows to have the incorrect time displayed whenever switching from SteamOS to Windows and can also lead to some games failing to launch in Windows, especially Game Pass games. So I'm going to show you how to fix this issue once and for all. All we have to do is click on the start menu and in the search bar, we will type in CMD. 
CMD. To bring up the command prompt, we will then right click on CMD and choose to run as administrator. Next, we're going to copy and paste the following registry edit into the command prompt by hitting control V on your keyboard. You will be able to copy this registry edit from the description of this video. And voila, it's fixed. Now, you're not gonna see a difference down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen until you reboot the system. But we do also have the option of going into our settings and manually setting the correct time as well. To do this, just go into the date and time settings in Windows, toggle off set time automatically, and then set the time to your local time. Now, we all know that Windows isn't the best operating system for handheld gaming. The main reason for this is that it's just too damn bloated. It pre-installs a bunch of apps that you really don't need, and having all of those apps running in the background really can hinder performance. One of the things that makes SteamOS so great is that it's very lightweight and only includes what is necessary for an optimal gaming experience. Well, what if I told you that we can also strip down Windows to only what we need for gaming. We will use an app called Bloaty Nosy to de-bloat Windows. Once we have Bloaty Nosy launched, the first thing we will do is have it analyze our system for bloatware and any unnecessary background applications. Now, once it's done analyzing our system, we can tell it to fix our system by getting rid of whatever it doesn't like. We can also select what to keep if we don't want to get rid of everything. And we can also undo this process as well. So don't be afraid if you make a mistake. Once we click on fix, Bloaty Nosy will begin the process of debloating Windows, and this process only takes about a minute or two. After the process is complete, it will generate a report of all of the fixes. We can even go a bit further and have it get rid of even more apps that it left behind. Now, it may not be able to get rid of everything, and that's okay. Even this is a huge improvement over stock Windows. Another extra step that I like to do is to go into the start menu and manually uninstall apps that I do not need. Now, let's take a moment to talk about memory usage. As you all know, the Steam Deck only comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which has to be shared between the CPU and the GPU. Now, unlike SteamOS, which is really efficient in how it manages memory, Windows is not as efficient which means that memory can easily be gobbled up by a game and background processes, leaving very little left over for actual VRAM. This can lead to crashes and an instability in certain games. Let's take Forza Horizon 5 as an example. By default, page file memory in Windows is set to 2,432 megabytes. For those who are unfamiliar with a page file, it is storage space that can be allocated as a backup for system memory, often functioning in the same way as RAM. It is also referred to as a swap file. While attempting to run the benchmark mode in Forza Horizon 5 with the page file set to the default 2,432 megabytes, we encountered a crash every single time. However, after increasing this value to 11 gigabytes, suddenly we are able to run the benchmark. Hence, we have found that by increasing this page file to around 11 gigabytes, it will improve overall performance and stability in certain games. Now, we also have to mention that we have increased the UMA buffer in the BIOS to four gigabytes, but we're not so sure that this has much of an impact on performance. By default, this is set to one gigabyte and theoretically by changing this, it allows the BIOS to allocate up to four gigabytes of system memory for VRAM. This really isn't necessary for gaming in SteamOS, but in Windows, if left at the default setting, will result in games being limited to one gigabyte of RAM for graphics processing. Many have claimed to see significant performance gains by changing this from one gigabyte to four gigabytes. Now, let's take a look at the same Forza benchmark running with the UMA buffer set to the default value of one gigabyte with the exact same settings. So here we are, Forza Horizon 5, low settings with FSR set to off. And as we can see, even without FSR enabled, we are able to average a very respectable 46 FPS. This leads me to believe that with FSR enabled, we may be able to hit and possibly average 60 FPS with these same settings. Looking at the results, what we find interesting is that despite being limited to one gigabyte in the BIOS, 
the game still reported an overall usage of 3.52 gigabytes of VRAM out of 7.73 gigabytes. The game also reported an overall usage of 8.73 gigabytes out of 14.85 gigabytes for system memory. Both of these combined totals add up to roughly 12 gigabytes of RAM usage during this benchmark, which very closely matches what we are able to see on our custom performance overlay up in the top left corner of the screen. So despite the fact that it appears that only one gigabyte of RAM is being used for VRAM in our performance overlay, in actuality, the game is still registering up to 3.52 gigabytes of VRAM usage according to the game's own internal benchmark. So in conclusion, we're just not sure about how much of a performance boost you're gonna get from this, but we thought we'd mention it. And if you wanna try this out for yourself, simply go into the BIOS by holding down volume plus and power with the Steam Deck completely powered off. This will take you into the BIOS menu from here, select the setup utility, scroll down to advanced, and then scroll down to where it says UMA buffer. And from here, you can change the value from one GB to four GB. Press the info button to save and exit. Next up, let's talk about the on-screen keyboard. By default, the on-screen keyboard is not enabled. And unlike SteamOS, if you click on a text box, it will not automatically appear on the screen. However, we can set it up to do so in the Windows settings. And later on, we will show you how we can set up a hotkey in Handheld Companion to bring up the on-screen keyboard. So in order to enable the on-screen keyboard, we will need to click on Start, Settings, then click on the hamburger icon in the top left corner, and then we're gonna scroll down to where it says Time and Language. From here, we'll scroll down to where it says Typing. Next, we'll select touch keyboard in the list of options. Then we'll check the option that says, show the touch keyboard when there's no keyboard attached. This will automatically bring up the touch keyboard whenever you click on a text box using the touch screen. I also like to modify the size and theme of my keyboard, making it larger. To do this, we'll click on size and theme, scroll down until we see touch keyboard, click on it, and then drag the keyboard size slider all the way to the right. Now let's install Handheld Companion. For those of you who do not know about Handheld Companion, Handheld Companion is an absolute necessity for Steam Deck gaming in Windows. It provides us with a wide array of options. It gives us the ability to emulate an Xbox or a PlayStation controller, adjust our TDP on the fly, adjust the fan curve, set up hotkeys, and more. This video will not go over every single feature of Handheld Companion, but we'll provide you with enough information to get you started. A quick disclaimer before we go any further. Many have asked whether or not Handheld Companion will get you banned in competitive shooter games with anti-cheats. Games like Call of Duty, Destiny, Fortnite, etc. Now this is something that I have asked the devs themselves and they do not recommend making any adjustments while playing any competitive shooter game with an anti-cheat. So if you are planning to play a game such as COD, I recommend making your adjustments before going into a game. I have personally used Handheld Companion many times while playing Call of Duty and so far have not had any issues. Having said that, I will not be making any adjustments to TDP or fan speed going forward while in a game just to be on the safe side. Now, once we're done installing Handheld Companion, it's going to ask us to restart but before we do, I'm going to check for an update to make sure we are using the most recent version. To do this, we will launch the app, go into settings, and then click on check for update. And once we're done downloading the update, that's when we're gonna restart our system. All right, so real quick, before we hop into Handheld Companion, I have to show you how to disable Xbox Game Bar. So when launching HC, you may see a box like this pop up on the screen. It has something to do with Xbox Game Bar and it can be quite annoying. In order to prevent this from happening, you have to update Xbox Game Bar. However, if you do not want to use Xbox Game Bar, I'm going to show you right now how to disable it. So the first thing we're going to do is update it in the Microsoft Store. Once we've updated it, we will then go into our settings, click on the hamburger icon, scroll down and click on where it says gaming, and then we're going to toggle Xbox Game Bar to off. Next, we're going to click on the hamburger icon, scroll down and click on apps, click on installed apps, 
find Xbox Game Bar in the list and click on the three dots, select advanced options and change background permissions to never. Then we're going to scroll down a bit and click on terminate. This will make sure that Xbox Game Bar isn't running in the background. Now we'll go over my settings for handheld companion. I usually like to have handheld companion start up with windows and run in the background. So I'm going to toggle on auto start application, open application in background, closes minimizes, enable desktop profile on start for mouse controls. And I also prefer the dark theme over the light theme. I also set my startup type to automatic. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom here, you can see that we have the ability to set minimum and maximum values for TDP and also override the fan speed. On the controller tab is where we can select which controller to emulate. It gives us an option to emulate a PlayStation or an Xbox controller. Scrolling down, we have options for our desktop layout controls. This gives us the ability to configure the controller however we want when using it like a mouse on the desktop. For example, if you want to use the thumbsticks to move the mouse and scroll, you can set that up here. You can also bind buttons to keyboard keys. The profile tab is where you can create a specific controller profile for a specific game. When handheld companion detects that the game has launched, it will load the specific profile you have set up for that game. The overlay tab allows you to have a controller overlay on the screen, which will mimic your movements. This is an awesome feature that will come in handy for content creators who want to demonstrate their controller actions with a controller on the screen. My favorite section is the hotkeys tab. This is where we can bind functions to the buttons on the controller. For example, I have mine set up in the following way. The steam button brings up the start menu. The three dot option button brings up the handheld companions quick settings menu. L4 toggles my FPS overlay, which we will discuss here in just a moment. L5 is configured to show the desktop. R4 toggles on and off the desktop layout, which is important because you do not want this enabled while in a game or else you may experience double inputs. R5 brings up my on-screen keyboard. We can also pin certain functions to the quick settings menu by clicking on the pin next to any of the quick tools, but you are limited to only nine of these functions. The quick settings menu is where we can also adjust brightness, volume, resolution, TDP, all on the fly. Next, let's talk about overlays. Overlays allow us to easily determine how well a game is performing on our system. This is usually measured in frame rate, but there are many other metrics that we can look at as well to give us a better picture of what is going on. SteamOS features several overlays built into the operating system and they can easily be toggled on and off from the SteamOS menu, even while in a game. This is something that early on, I wanted to be able to replicate in Windows on the Steam Deck. And it wasn't long before my buddy Mute and I figured out a way to create our own custom performance overlays. And of course, we wanted to create something that resembled the Steam Deck's overlays, so we did. Now, in order to prevent this video from running too long, we will not be going into great detail on how to actually create a custom overlay. For those who would like to learn how to make their own performance overlays, I will refer you to our video on how to create your own custom overlays. In that video, we show you how to create a performance overlay from start to finish and how to use handheld companion to be able to toggle it on and off with the press of a button. For those who simply want an overlay to use in game and do not want to go through the trouble of creating one, our overlays can be downloaded from the overlay section in our discord server. Let's quickly go over how to set this up. Earlier, we downloaded an app called MSI Afterburner, which comes bundled with RTSS, but really all we need out of this bundle is RTSS. We also downloaded an app called HW Info or Hardware Info. This app will be used to feed specific sensor data to RTSS. Once we have both installed, we will launch HW Info and configure it in the following way. There's a box at the bottom which says shared memory support. This box must be checked in order to be able to share info between HW Info and RTSS. With the free version of this app, it only stays checked for 12 hours and then has to be manually rechecked. If you do not want to have to recheck this box every 12 hours, then you can purchase the paid version. For us, the free version works just fine, so we haven't felt compelled to upgrade. 
Next, we'll set up RTSS. When setting up RTSS, I normally like to have it start with Windows and I have the show on screen display toggled on. Next, we will click on setup down at the bottom and then click on the plugins tab at the top. Here we have a hotkey handler and an overlay editor. We want to make sure to click both checks next to hotkey handler and overlay editor. Now let's go over the hotkey handler. At first, you may have a hard time seeing all of the options available in this section. Currently, the option that we want to set is not shown here because it's being cut off at the top of the screen. To fix this, we will right click on the taskbar at the bottom and then click on taskbar settings. From here, we will scroll down in the menu to where it says taskbar behaviors. Next, we will select automatically hide the taskbar. Now we're able to see the option to toggle on screen display. I'm going to set this to number nine on my keyboard. Afterwards, we can go back into the taskbar settings and have it show the taskbar again. Next, we'll go back to the hotkey section and handheld companion and scroll down to the custom hotkey section at the bottom. We'll give our custom hotkey a name. We'll call it FPS overlay. Over to the right, we can assign a hotkey input and a keyboard output. We will set our keyboard output to the number nine, just like we did in RTSS. And we will set our hotkey input to the L4 trigger on the back of the Steam Deck. We can also add this to our quick settings menu for easy access by clicking on the pin. And we're all set. Now we can toggle our FPS overlay on and off. Next, we'll add our custom overlays to RTSS. For those who want to use our custom overlays, you can find them posted on our Discord server. Simply scroll down to the section where it says, share your custom overlays. Here you will see that we have two overlays posted. One is a more detailed vertical style overlay and the other is a less detailed horizontal styled overlay similar to the overlays used by SteamOS. Once downloaded, open up RTSS and click on Setup and then go into the Overlay Editor. On the Layouts tab, click on Load. Then copy and paste the overlays into the folder and select one of them to load. If you see a zero where it should be showing your FPS, this is because HWinfo has two sensors that go by the same name called Frame Rate and by default it uses the one that shows zero. To fix this, all we need to do is go into HW Info sensorless and disable monitoring for the sensor that is showing zero. To disable it, scroll down until we find the sensor called frame rate showing zero. We will then right click on it and select disable monitoring. When disabled, it will change colors. This will force HW Info to use the other frame rate sensor instead, and you should now be able to see the correct frame rate rather than zero. And here you can see the finished product. We are able to toggle our performance overlay on and off by pressing the L4 button while in a game. Okay, so last but definitely not least, let's go over how to set up a dual boot option menu. A dual boot option menu is a menu that is loaded up at launch, which basically prompts you to select which operating system to boot into. This has actually been around for a while now, and I used to get a lot of requests to show how to set this up. However, you know that my channel is all about making things easy to understand and follow, even for someone who is new to PC, PC gaming, and tinkering. And after having gone through the process myself in the past with Refined, I felt that there was no way that I could simplify the entire process for the total noob. So despite the fact that I had managed to get it up and running on my own personal Steam Deck, I avoided making a video on how to do it. I just didn't want to have to respond to all of the, yo, I did everything you said, but it's not working for me. Please help. Or, hey, I think I messed up somehow. How do I fix it? Or, it was working fine until I did this. Please help type of comments. But now, thanks to this software, I feel like I have no excuse not to show you how to do it because it is so simple that it's literally hard to screw up. And unlike the refine script that a lot of people were using before, this one doesn't appear to break after a SteamOS update. With Refined, anytime you updated SteamOS, the script could be broken and you then had to use a script to reapply Refined. All of this was made possible using an app called Clover. First, let me send a huge shout out to Ryan Rudolph for developing Clover to make this all possible. And without any further ado, let's get this all set up. So the first thing we're going to need to do is switch over to the SteamOS desktop mode. Once we're in desktop mode, we'll go into our application launcher, go to system and then click on console. Now, if you have not already set up a password for SteamOS, we'll do that now. 
in console we will type p-a-s-s-w-d and then press enter it will then prompt you to type in a password we will need to enter the password again to confirm next we will need to set up a pseudo password a pseudo password is required whenever we want to perform actions that require administrator level permissions in Linux. We will set this up by typing sudo followed by a space and then passwd and then press enter. It will then ask you to enter the password you just set up a minute ago. Next, enter the password you have chosen to be your sudo password. Re-enter your sudo password to confirm. We now have a password and a pseudo password set up and can proceed with the installation. Next, we're going to enter the following command to download the script from GitHub and then press enter. Remember that everything is case sensitive, so type it exactly as you see it here. We will also include this in the description so you can copy and paste it instead. Next, we are going to use the following command to change directories to the location where the app was downloaded and then press enter. After that, we're going to enter the following command to make the install file executable and then press enter. And lastly, we will enter the following command to execute the install script and then press enter. It will then prompt you for your sudo password. Enter it and then press enter. Afterwards, it will give you the option to select the default OS to boot into if nothing is selected after the 15 second timer at startup. We chose SteamOS as our default OS. After this, you should see a bunch of text appear on the screen showing the install process. Once it is finished, it will show a window with instructions on how to disable or uninstall Clover should you so choose. Clover will also be added to Steam as a non-Steam game so that you can check its status. And that's pretty much it. All we have to do now is reboot the system to see it in action. All right, so here we are booting up our Steam Deck and this is the Clover boot menu. So first we'll go ahead and boot into SteamOS and this may take about a minute or so. All right, and here we are, we are in SteamOS, and now we'll go ahead and shut it back down again. And this time we're going to reboot into Windows. All right, so one quick thing I wanna mention about when you're booting into Windows, you may see these lines appear on the screen as you're booting into it, but it's nothing to worry about. I don't know how to get rid of it, but it doesn't prevent us from actually getting into Windows. So it's not a big deal for me. And here we are, we are in Windows. All right, guys, so that pretty much does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We went over a lot. I hate that this video was this long. I hope you guys find it informative and helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. It, greatly helps us out here and it's, it's the best way to support this channel so that's it for us guys we are out of here we'll see you in the next one peace target acquired